Hi everyone, I'm Nathan, I'm Kara's brother. Um, my uh, little sermonette is based on the other passage that is the theme for this Sunday, and uh, it's from Isaiah, so, and I'm reading from the NIV. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I experienced a great amount of physical vulnerability and helplessness yesterday afternoon. I'm going to play Macbeth in our school's UIL competition show, and at the end of the show, as some of you, probably more than first series here actually know, Macbeth gets his head cut off, and the disembodied head is displayed to the audience. To simulate this on stage, our drama department is making a physical copy of my head, and yesterday I had a full facial mold of my head made. Has anybody had a mold of their head made before? Just <laughs> No? Okay. Uh, basically, here's how it works. Um, I had to sit for about an hour yesterday. Actually, it was about an hour and a half because the first one was a bust. But um, I had to sit for about, actually lay for about an hour yesterday afternoon. Goop covered all of my face and all of my head, and I was unable to move or talk and barely able to breathe except for two small holes in my nostrils. And this mold had dried, and as it dried, it slowly got heavier and heavier on my face. And near the end, I sort of, as I was laying down, I started choking on my own spit a little bit. And um, it was dark and fairly miserable. But as I, uh, as I sat in the darkness, even with people that I knew and trusted, I felt vulnerable and, well, like a body without a head, felt hopeless. And I think I can say with confidence that one of the most universal human experiences is the perception of weakness and hopelessness. Every single person comes out of the womb weak and hopeless, and every person is helpless as they lie, experiencing their own death. In between these two phases of incredible weakness and vulnerability, the experience is repeated to a lesser extent, but over and over and over again, um, even as the passage states with youth. And actually, I think the reference to youth uh, that Isaiah puts in here is funny, because times have certainly changed since Isaiah initially wrote it. Uh, in this day and age, where competence and productivity are key traits to society, he should have written, especially used to tired and weary, and young men really have potential to mess up. Yet Isaiah uses youth as the prime example of human fitness in a day when having young people was one of the best assets a working family could have. A young person would be the breadwinner of the family, or the bread maker, often quite literally. Today, Isaiah would probably write, even your top salesman makes mistakes. Even your greatest ambassador cannot create peace in Libya. Even the most confident person you know has experienced weakness and hopelessness. Even your community of accountability will, in some ways, let you down. Because while God gives us strength and help through community, community in and of itself cannot strengthen us, as Ben talked about. The worst kind of community can negatively influence all of its members. And even the best kind of community will not help with everything. Even a strong church full of life and love of Christ can be a heart of petty arguing, hurt feelings, and selfishness. Even a youth group with kind and outgoing members can stifle with the uncomfortable arrival of a potential new member. With this acknowledgement, with this acknowledgement of brokenness, Isaiah then shifts into deeply poetic language of how we will soar like eagles and run without being weary with the help of God. Now, to be honest, this language was the reason I did not initially wish to preach, to preach on this verse, why I was initially frustrated when Ben and Kara snatched up the Ecclesiastes one for their talks. Uh, because while this is beautiful poetry, I feel that this verse is too often used as an idealistic Christian platitude, something great for a shiny card or a Bible bookmark of how God will change you. And honestly, I certainly wish that God would give us such incredible feelings all the time, but I think we could all say that this is not always the case. However, upon a closer read, you, you can say that the verse refers to those who hope in the Lord, who will have the strength to renew. Certain, uh, a lot of translations say that uh, those who wait upon the Lord will have the strength to renew. To wait in the Lord does not imply immediacy. A quick fit, an instant feeling of flight and power. To hope in the Lord is to believe and wait for Him to fulfill all that is in His character. And what is His character? Well, 
It is in his character to fulfill his promises. And Isaiah talks in great deal, detail throughout all of his book about God's greatest promise of all, his promise in reconciling the world, in keeping a broken world, and one day fixing it. I think C.S. Lewis, in The Last Battle, the last book in his epic Narnia trilogy, takes this verse, and I'm sure this verse is his inspiration, and he uh, literally uses it to create some very exciting imagery of what things could be like in the new world. Uh, Aslan is taking his people to the new Narnia, and Lewis writes this. The unicorn shook his mane and sprang into a great gallop, a unicorn's gallop, which in our world would have carried him out of sight in a few moments. And now a most strange thing began to happen. Everyone else began to run, and they found, to their astonishment, that they could keep up with him. Not only the dogs and the humans, but even fat little Puzzle and the short-legged Pog and the Dwarf. The air flew in their faces as if they were driving in a fast car without a windscreen. The country flew past as if they were seeing it from the windows of an express train. Faster and faster they raced, but no one got hot or tired or out of breath. So they ran faster and faster until it was more like flying than running. And even the eagle overhead is going no faster than they. St. Mark, I know that you have experienced wariness, powerless, and vulnerability. I most certainly have. I know that many of you feel or have felt like there's a mask on your face that is hardening and pushing down on you, rendering you useless. In response, the youth and I would certainly hope that you understand the power of fellowship and community. That fellowship can bring all, everyone that participates in the fellowship up. And that God can use this for his power and for accountability through him. Yet I know that we have witnessed, and will always witness, the brokenness of these groups. Because we are inevitably broken. That even the most faithful members sin. And that without God in these groups, we cannot truly hold each other. So let us wait on him alone, who endures forever and has promised to reconcile the world. And let us hope in our maker, who, when we are rendered helpless, will enable us to move and, greater still, live without the constraints that render us hopeless in this world. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for renewing our strength. Life is full of challenges and hopelessness. And God, thank you for all the ways in which you help us move and live through you. Thank you for fellowship and community, which enables us to power through the tough things in life. And thank you for your promises and your character, which will soon and very soon reconcile the world and make it to it. In your precious and holy name, amen.